Do you need low bedding to tame gerbils? No. No, you don't. It only took her 17 days to go from this to this. All while she had a comfy 30 centimeters of bedding the entire time. You may come across a lot of advice online suggesting that the only way to tame gerbils is by lowering their bedding. But this just simply isn't true. And on top of that, it causes the gerbils unnecessary stress in my opinion. Gerbils are prey animals and aren't yet fully domesticated, so they're naturally very shy and a little scared of people. So lowering the bedding to tame them would be the human equivalent of locking someone in a room with something they're scared of so they can get over it. Technically, it could work, but it would cause the individual massive stress in the process, while there are much kinder methods that are just as effective. So if we can't know where they're bedding to tame them, what should we do instead? Well, the initial steps are all very passive and involve slowly building up trust with our gerbils. And you can download the simplified text version of all these steps from the link in the description. The very first thing is getting them used to your scent, and you can do this before you even bring them home. When I prepped the carrier for Luna, I added some shredded kitchen roll that I rubbed my clean hands on to transfer some of my scent. A handy little tip I picked up from Victoria Rachel. This way, Luna was able to start getting used to my scent on the journey home without any interaction from me. Then I added this bedding back into her enclosure when we got home so that she could continue to get used to my scent while she was settling in. Gerbils rely very heavily on scent for communication and identification of crown members. So by adding our scent to their enclosure, they can start getting to know us without us needing to physically be there. The next step is letting them settle in for a day or two. Moving house is stressful, so it's a good idea to leave them be for at least the first day so they can get used to their new space. The next step for us was encouraging Luna out into the topper by filling it with things like a millet spray, a foraging toy, and leaving carefully placed treats for her to find. Highly valuable food like nuts and seeds get picked out of her daily food mix so that she only gets them when she comes out into the low bedding area. This helps to make the treats seem even more valuable because they're not always available and it helps to encourage the gerbils into an area they may usually avoid so that they can get the really yummy treats they can't find anywhere else. When it comes to building trust, it's also important to make sure we don't stare at them. Eye contact in the animal kingdom is generally considered to be a threat so it's important to regularly break eye contact by doing things like slow blinking and turning your head away to show them that they have nothing to worry about. Gerbils, like hamsters and rats, may also respond to winking, and when they start to feel comfortable around you, they may even wink back. The first week with Luna, she was extremely nervous and spent most of her time hiding and foot thumping at every tiny movement and noise. Don't thump, it's okay. But she was clearly coming out into the topper when we weren't around which was a good sign that she was starting to build up a bit of confidence. During this first week, the main goal was just getting her more comfortable when people were around. I spent a lot of time just sat next to her enclosure, talking nonsense at box full of bedding. Because there's another seed here, which I think you will like. But this was important to help her learn to trust me, because as well as scent, gerbils also rely on hearing quite a lot. So just by talking to them, they can start to learn who we are and get used to us being around. By day three, I'd start to notice a pattern that any kind of movement or sound seemed to startle her and cause her to run back into her burrows. But if I was already sat next to the enclosure when she came out and then I stayed still, she started to investigate some more. She was also starting to get better about coming back out after running away. It wasn't taking her as long as it used to, which was a good sign that she was gaining confidence. Then on day seven, I started trying to get her used to slow movements. When you're doing this training, you should watch the gerbil's behavior very closely. If you take a look at Puma's behaviour in this clip, you can see that she's quite relaxed at the moment while she's chewing on her tubes. So now is a time when I would try and move a bit closer, which spooked her, but not fully. So while she's still and not moving as frequently, she's still a bit stressed. And then when she starts chewing again, she started to relax a bit more. And if you watch her, she's still, she's still her ears are up she's still like pausing and getting slightly startled so she's not fully relaxed yet and then when she starts going back to chewing a bit more then we move a bit closer again and now if i were to move closer right now while she's still quite still and quite she's got quite a tense body language she would likely then run all the way into the burrows and that would end the training. So I just need to wait for her to fully relax before I move again. And now that she started getting more comfortable with being out in the open, I started to offer her food, which she promptly ran away with. 
This helps to show our gerbils that we are where food comes from directly and helps to build up a positive association in their minds between us and good things like food. By day eight, Luna was starting to come up to the enclosure bars to look for pumpkin seeds and was taking them when offered. This was really good progress and we kept up all the same training for the next few days. On day 12, I started giving her small pieces of pumpkin seeds instead of whole ones, so that she's less likely to run away with them. This is a common pattern seen in prey animals. Wild squirrels would be more likely to run away to eat a piece of food if it's large, because it helps to keep them safe from predators while they're eating. But if the pieces are small, then running away every time would end up using more energy than is gained from the food. And they're also less at risk from predators because it takes them less time to eat. So squirrels will be more likely to stay out in the open to eat the smaller pieces. So we can use this theory to our advantage when it comes to taming our gerbils. If you break up pumpkin seeds into smaller pieces and use these for training, gerbils are less likely to run and hide to eat them which helps them learn to feel safe being out in the open. And it has the added benefit of giving you more opportunities to reinforce behavior, because you can give lots of small pieces for the same calorie content as one big seed. Although when you're doing a lot of training with rewards, it's a good idea to lower their daily food slightly to compensate for the extra calories. A 10% reduction should be enough. A 30% reduction would be considered a weight loss diet, so we don't want to go that low. From this point on, Luna started getting more comfortable with people around. She stopped running away as much, and when she did run, she'd only go slightly into her tunnels before peeking out again. I took this as a sign that she was starting to learn that A, people aren't threats, and B, people mean I get treats. She also started being willing to stand partially on my hand to take treats, which is the start of the more active taming process. This involves using the pieces of seeds as lures to slowly encourage her onto my hand little by little. We kept up this training for the next few days and I noticed that she started to pop her head out when we said the word seed. What in the seed? Giving us a handy little call for her. Then on day 17, we had a breakthrough. She finally sat with all four feet on my hand while munching a seed. As you can probably tell by her bum remaining safely perched inside the enclosure, she's still not fully comfortable with this. But she's come a really long way since we started. Since then, we've kept up the same training, and sometimes Luna will fully sit on my hand, other times she won't even step out, but we keep up the training. We did try a tip from Shadow the Rat of using liquid treats on a spoon so she couldn't run away with them, but apparently we've got a broken gerbil because it seems Luna doesn't like peanut butter. Most gerbils go mad for it though, so it could be a handy tip to try with your gerbils. Just make sure to only use a tiny bit and that the ingredients are 100% peanuts. And make sure not to use this more than twice per week as peanut butter is very high in calories and fat. And it's also important to be patient. This process can take more or less time depending on the individual gerbil. They're all different. Some will be shyer than others and some may never fully enjoy being handled. Luna's shy personality reminds me a bit of how Timon was. The only time Timon was ever fully comfortable sitting on my hand was when she was sat next to Pumba and she only started to get more comfortable standing on my hand by herself when she started to gain confidence from exploring the playpen. So this will be our next step when Luna's out of quarantine. And if you want to know how I set up our playpen to help build Timon's confidence, then check out this video and I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.